Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Right, so um, let's have a look at the limits of sequences and, and what exactly does that mean? So as the number of terms in a sequence becomes very large, in some cases, the terms of the sequence converge to a fixed value, which is called the limit of a sequence. Okay, if a limit exists, its value will be a finite number. And note that infinity is not considered a, a number and the symbol should be in there. So infinity is not a number. So, for example, if you had a series two, four, I'm thinking of a series that multiplies by two each time, eight, 16, 32, 64. If I was to ask you, does this sequence have a limit? Okay, does it converge to a fixed value? Okay, then you would probably tell me, no, it doesn't. Okay, why? If we look at those numbers, what is going to happen then? They're just going to get um, bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, and eventually they'll approach infinity. Okay, but infinity is not a number. It's this abstract measure of something out there that is so big, we, um, yeah, we call it infinity. So I would describe that sequence as not converging. Okay, so then what is a sequence that does converge? Okay, well, let's have a look at this one. Let's have a look at 0 0.3, 0 0.33, 0 0.333, 0 0.3333, 0.33333 and so on and so forth. Does that converge? In other words, does it approach a number? Does it become come closer to a fixed value? And in this particular case, it does. It gets closer to the, to the number third. And if you put the number third into your calculator, I'm just doing it now, one over three, you will see an S to D it, you would see you get the number 0 0.3 with the dot on top, okay? And that dot on top here is a reoccurring three, okay? So if you hit S to D again, you'll see you get 0 0.3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and that three goes on forever, okay? So one third is 0 0.3, but that three is reoccurring. So this particular sequence, as the number of terms gets bigger, that value gets closer to a third. So it converges to a fixed value, okay? So the limit of this sequence would be a third. Okay, and, and we'll do a few examples of, of looking at different, um, different terms and seeing do they have a limit. So important points now to remember about limits, okay? So as n approaches infinity, so, so you'll often see this written down with limit sums. And what it means in, in everyday English is that the number n is very big, okay? It's a very, very, very big number, okay? Um, as big as you can get. So as n approaches infinity, okay? So n is a huge, huge number. Okay, so, so this section on limits, it's a little bit abstract and you just have to try and wrap your head about, around it. So n approaching infinity is a very large number. Okay, so what happens when you're dealing with large numbers? Okay, well, I just have three examples here written down as to what happens when you're dealing with large numbers. So as n approaches infinity, the value of n and the value of n plus eight is almost the same. So to explain that, so if you had 
a million euros. Okay, so let's say N was a million euros. Okay, uh, you just won the lottery or whatever and you had a million euros. And if someone was to give you or owed you eight euros more, would it make much difference to you? Would you just say, oh, I have a million and eight euros or would you still describe it as ah, I have a million euros? OK, we would say we have a million euros. OK, it's a, it's a bit too like rounding at, at a football match or a concert. Um, if N, the number is quite large, then a few more doesn't really make much difference. So when you're dealing with large numbers, such as when N is up towards infinity or up in the millions, the value of N or the value of N plus eight is practically the same. Right, the next one. As N approaches infinity, then N squared will be significantly bigger than N. Okay, so if we think about that one for a minute, um, if N was again equal to 1 million, well then N squared would be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so N squared is significantly bigger than N. Okay, and as N gets bigger again, because you, you, if you think infinity, you could be in billions or trillions or zillions or, or whatever the number is, N squared is then going to be a ginormous number altogether. Okay, and then the opposite, as N approaches infinity, N squared would be very small compared to N cubed. Okay, so going up in powers makes a huge difference when you're dealing with big numbers. Right, so then the last bit of theory I want to do on limits of sequences um, or, and series is what is a convergent and a divergent series. Okay, and, and it's tied in, it's tied in to this as to whether there's a limit or not. So when the limit as n tends to infinity of Tn exists, we can say that the sequence is convergent, is convergent. A geometric series converges if the common ratio is between minus one and one. OK, so that's a little bit of, of theory that may or may not crop up. OK, so if it converges, if, if a limit exists, then it converges. OK, any sequence that's not convergent must be described as divergent. This means it has no limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, so if we think about that for a second, and we think about the two examples that we did, you see the two, the four, the eight, the 16, the 32, and so on and so forth. Okay, does that sequence converge at all or is it divergent? OK, so this one would be divergent. OK, it has no limit as n approaches infinity. Whereas if we look at a third, well, let me write it as decimal first. If we look at the sequence 0 0.3, 0 0.33, 0 0.333, 0 0.333, and so on and so forth. Does that converge towards a value? Yes, it does. Okay, it converges towards a third. So when the limit exists, we say the sequence is convergent. Okay, just have a quick look, see if there's anything else I want to say about that. Um, yes. There's one here in one of the books. That's probably a good point to make. Okay, um, if you have this sequence, one minus one, one minus one, one minus one. Okay, so it's a very predictable series. It's very repetitive. It's perfect in, in a way. It's a lovely sequence. Um, does it have a limit? As the number of terms grows, that's what n to infinity means, 
okay, as the number of terms in this sequence grows, does it converge to a particular value or is it divergent, okay? Okay, well, in a way it's neither, but it has to be one. So it's, it's, it's not divergent in that it, it goes to infinity because it doesn't. It repeats between one and minus one. However, it's not convergent. Okay, there is no single value that Tn approaches as n gets bigger. Okay, so you cannot say that the sequent converges to one or minus one, okay, because it doesn't. It flicks between the two. So therefore, because you rule out convergent, the sequence falls into divergent. Okay, and that's why its definition is written like this. Any sequence that is not convergent must be described as divergent. Okay, so those words are not random, they're chosen um, specially, okay? So you check to see does it converge and if it doesn't, then it falls into divergent. Okay, so I'm going to stop this recording here and then we're going to have a look at a few different examples of how do you figure out whether um, terms have um, limits or not. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.